Hello everyone and welcome to Raven's World and welcome to my review of Prismata. Prismata is a game available on Steam and full disclosure I got a key from the developers in order to review this game. So I did not pay for it myself. Now what is Prismata? I think the best thing I can do is basically read the description on the Steam store page because I actually found it very fitting. It says a uniquely gripping hybrid strategy game like no other inspired by RTS which is real-time strategy, deck builders and tabletop strategy games. Outwit your foes by efficiently constructing and commanding a powerful cybernetic army, a radical achievement in game design. Prismata rewrites, rewrites the rules of strategy games. Now what does that mean? It actually means that the game itself is, well, it's card based. However, it kind of feels like you are playing something like Warcraft 2 or Starcraft, like a real time strategy game where you kind of have to build a base and you're slowly building units and trying to outwit the enemy. So let's have a look. A game of Prismata always starts in the same way. Both you and your opponent start with six drones and two engineers. Now drones are basically the gatherers if you're thinking about things like Warcraft or Starcraft. Here they are getting us resources, in this case money. The engineers they're producing energy with which I can build more drones. Now what's important to know is here on the left you can see a list of units and buildings I can build as well as their costs. So an engineer costs 2 money, a drone costs 3 money and 1 energy, a blast forge costs 5 money and so on. So this left part of the list is units you have access to every single game. However, next to those units, you also have this right part here, and that's basically randomly chosen from a much bigger list and every, at the beginning of every game, there will be a random selection of units from that bigger list. Now, what's very important to know is that both me and my opponent have access to exactly these units. We start off with exactly the same selection, and that makes a big part of the fun of this game. There is no randomness whatsoever, basically, except in the initial selection, but both you and your opponent have to make the best of the hand that you're dealt. So how does the gameplay go? Well, it is now my turn and I kind of have to now start building up an economy so that I can build a lot of units that will then attack the enemy. As you can see here I have 6 drones currently and I've produced 2 energy because the engineer says start of turn gain 1 energy. The drone however I have to click in order to give me an energy and I can do that in multiple ways and that already shows how polished this game is. So I can just click on them individually or I can drag them or I can just press Q in order to activate all drones at once. So there's many ways and many shortcuts in this game that make things much quicker to do. For example, now I have six money as well as two energy, so I could build two drones, for example, which is kind of a standard opening. So either I can just press uh, on this button to build a drone, or I could press D, which you can see here for drone, and then I build the drones. Now I don't have any money anymore. What you can see here is how much gold I will have next turn because I have six plus two is eight drones that will all be producing one gold if I want them to, because if I don't click them, I will not get any gold. And why that is important to know is something that we'll dig in later. So now basically I can end my turn, commit it, and see what the enemy will do. And he actually built only one drone and then two engineers. So he had a different opening than me. It's important to know that I'm playing against Wacky Bot here, which is an AI that basically just chooses random moves every turn. So doing that extra engineer this turn is probably a stupid move instead of a drone. But that's why I thought I'd mention it. All right, now it's my turn again and I can basically choose what I want to do. So if I use all my drones, I can build more drones. But then I would have uh, two money left over, which is fine because I stack that up over turns, like I can save it up. Uh, what I can also do, for example, is build a drone less and build a blast forge, which will give me this resource here called Bohemium. And Bohemium is used, for example, for walls and steel splitters and here for the militia. And it is a resource that I cannot save up. So once I start producing Bohemium, one per turn with one Blast Forge, then it would be better to also use that one Bohemium per turn. Otherwise, I'm kind of wasting my resources, which would be a shame. I can also go for Animus here, which gives me two replicas every turn, the red stuff. And this is uh, more of an aggressive faction, basically. These things are very good at attacking. Uh, and then we've got Conduit here, 
and conduit uh, makes uh, this stuff here gaussite and gaussite is a little bit different from bohemium and replicase in that i can save it up just like gold so once i have a conduit and i don't use the gaussite immediately that's no problem i can just save it up so there's different things you can do so what i will do is just create more drones and now i could make an an engineer in order to next turn make three drones but i don't think i will do that all right now we have a new turn and i think it's time for me to kind of go and build an army so what i'll do is i will build a blast forge and that will then from next turn on give me bohemium so then i can start building units for the rest i don't think i'll do much i'll just build more drones in order to keep my money coming in We can see now that the enemy has built a conduit which will then produce gaussite for it while I'm producing bohemium. So already we have a completely different playstyle. So I'll select my drones and then I might build a steel splitter. And steel splitters, as you can see when I click them, they gain me one attack. And I'll show you a little bit more later. I could also build a militia which gives me an attack. However, if I don't want to use the attack, then I could click on it and basically trade that attack in for money, which is also nice to have. And now I have some money left, so I think I'll just put that into drones. So now the enemy has built a gauss cannon. Now this is where the attacking and defending gets interesting. Basically next turn, uh, the gauss cannon will start attacking and it will produce one attack every turn. Now the units with shields can block this one attack so let's say i would block with my drone the drone would die however then i would have also stopped this damage now if i select my drones to make money they cannot block next turn because i've used it so then only my engineers i left if i click on my steel splitter i cannot block with it because i have clicked on it and then it's already attacking so it will not be blocking so next turn it will do one attack to me so basically i would have to kill an engineer because the engineer also has this shield icon this can be fine like i would maybe be happy to sacrifice my engineer or i could for example build a wall which i will now do just so i can show you how blocking is uh, made very interesting in this game so i'll do that i'll build another blast forge to get more bohemium over time as well as a drone so now I've done one attack and he has assigned it to his engineer. So this is already an interesting thing. I do not get to assign my own damage. So the enemy got to assign it. And now the enemy is attacking me. And now I have to assign one damage over my engineer and wall. Now, if I assign it to my wall here, you can see that it has absorbed it because it has three health, but I only did one damage. If I would click on my engineer, the engineer would die. So if I give it to my wall and press end turn, suddenly I have three health again. And that's how defense works in this game. If you do damage, but not enough to kill a unit, then the unit just acts like nothing ever happened to turn after. So you would need to do exactly three damage in order to kill this. However, if I would do, if he would do three damage, what I could do is assign one of the damage to the engineer and then two damage to the wall so that the wall would still be alive next turn. And that's something that you will see in the example that I'll do later where I can get one of these puzzles that the game poses and then I'll show you how this damage allocation works. Now the interesting thing that happens is let's say the enemy would not have any engineers at the moment, then if I would attack him, then I would be the one that assigns the damage. If you do not have any blockers to absorb the damage, then your opponent gets to assign the damage. And that can be very dangerous because then, for example, I could start attacking his drone so that he will have less income next turn, or I could uh, start attacking his conduit so that he will not be able to produce as much gaussite next turn and so on. So if you do not have enough blocking or defense to block the damage then the rest of the damage gets actually assigned by your opponent and then you have no control over what will die and what will not so let's uh, play one more turn and then we'll go into the more uh, interesting things of the game so now i have drones and then i could make some more steel splitters for example and then i would already have three attack uh, next turn but for this turn i can only make one attack which is enough to kill one engineer
So we need a little bit of build up. Now the opponent has built a force field and as you can see here a force field is quite a costly way of defending. Oh let me first assign the damage. So as you can see here a force field costs you one gold and one gore site which is very cheap but it also costs you a drone. So you give up future production in order to make a blocking entity but instead of the normal blocking like I've showed you with the wall this one here is fragile and you see that uh, with the example and I'll, I'll repeat it then uh, but with fragile if I do it one damage which you might be able to see this turn let's see what he assigns uh, let's make more steel spitters assign with three No, he assigned it to his engineer, unfortunately. But if he would have assigned it to, uh, if he would have assigned one damage to his force field, then next turn it would only have one health left. Fragile means that you can whittle down the enemy instead of that the enemy kind of regenerates again if you didn't completely kill it this turn. So let's have a look at some of the units that we could build. Now we already talked about the Engineer, Drone, Conduit, Blast Forge and Animus. So the force field I just explained, the Gauss Cannon, I don't need to click on it, it will automatically fire every turn and it has 5 health so it's fairly difficult to get rid of. So a common strategy that you can see is that people build up a lot of Gauss Cannons and then before you know it you're being overwhelmed by Basically first one damage, then two damage per turn, then three damage per turn, then four damage per turn. And before you know it, you can't really stop them anymore because they have five health each, which is very hard to break through if you can already break through his defenses, which is quite hard. So then we have the wall. Uh, the blue ones here are quite defensive, so you can block uh, three damage with this wall here and also three damage with the steel splitter. The Tarsier and the Rhino are a bit more offensive and they're also very cheap. So basically with the Animus you produce two replicates per turn so basically it would mean you could for example build two tarsiers every turn the problem with tarsiers is that they first need two turns before they can act so they kind of have a summoning sickness if you've ever played magic um, for two turns but after that they will just do one damage each turn now keep these tarsiers in mind for when we get to the amparilla we have a, a rhino that is a blocker and he has prompt. So if I build him, I can immediately use him to block attacks with in the turn. Because for example, the steel splitters don't have that. I have to wait for a turn before I can use them to block with. Uh, he's also got a stamina of two, so it's only clickable twice. And clicking on him means that you gain an attack. So you can use him either for defense or attack. The steel forge here. It costs four gold as well as a blast forge. So basically it costs nine gold, you could say, but then you get two bohemium each turn. And if you click on it, you will pay one gold and two bohemium consume a drone, but then you produce a steel splitter. So it's a very different way of building steel splitters. Now, then we have the Mahar rectifier. It's fragile, so it can be damaged, but it heals itself over time. So this is really quite powerful. You have to do at least five damage to it in order to actually destroy it. Also, it's a blocker, so I can normally decide if I want to assign damage to it or not. So this is really quite um, hard to get rid of. And it also does two attack. Then we've got the militia. It gains one attack every turn, but if you click on it, you can redeem that attack and get one gold. Because let's say now the enemy had two of these uh, militias. Well, he could attack me, but I would just assign it to the wall and then nothing would happen. So the best thing for him to then do is just to click on them to gain gold instead, because the attack will be useless regardless. Then we've got a frostbite. It has a build time of two turns, but then if I click on it, I kill the frostbite, but I produce chill. And if I add chill to a unit, they cannot block if their chill equals or exceeds their health. So if he would now build a frostbite, if he had enough uh, replicates, then he could then chill my wall and I could not use my wall to block with. And this is extremely powerful because then he could immediately start basically attacking my engineers and then my drones, for example. Shadowfang, straight up damage. And Perilla, at the start of a turn, he gains one damage for each Tarsier that attacks this turn. So if you have an army of Tarsiers and you build an Amparilla, it can have like six or seven attack each turn. That's really quite strong. We have a Cauterizer here that costs both Bohemium and Replicates. When you buy him, you construct four Engineers, which produce energy, but you can also use them to block with. But then if you spend four energy on a turn, you will gain two attack. And this guy can also block with three health. Then we have a Centurion. Also a blocker, gains two attack, 
and has six health so he's far fairly hard to get rid of so he's nicely defensive and he can also attack whenever you need it so this is just a short example of all the units that are available because there are way more than this i wanted to illustrate how this kind of thinking process goes in this game and how complicated it can get um, with this mission here so be aware this will be a spoiler because well i'll show you how to beat it and it actually took me a long long time to figure this out i think it took me like 30 tries which is a lot so it might look easy now but at least to me it wasn't easy at all so what is the puzzle here we have four isochronuses and they each have two attacks so that means that they do eight damage now they have exhaust too so that means that they cannot do anything for two turns after they've attacked they've also got fragile which means instead of normal defense which means that if someone attacks us but don't doesn't kill us we basically just re regenerate our defense um, we can actually whittle these down so if we do one damage to this one now it will always have one less health so we, with our little army here, which consists of four walls, a steel splitter, which is a 1-3 creature, an emolite, which is a 1-1 creature, and a tarsier, which is a 1-1, we have to try to kill these. Now, there is a difference between the tarsier and the emolites, that is that we have these shield icons here. So I can either attack with the steel splitter, adding to my damage, or I can keep them back in order to defend with them. The tarsier always attacks. Now. We have to kill these and let's see how we do that. So I'll click on my Steel Splitter and Immolite. Then we have three attack from one from each of these. We proceed to damage. We assign them to the Isochronus. Don't completely kill it. He does eight damage. So we have to kill a wall, a wall. And then we have two damage left to assign. So we assign it to this wall, but we don't kill it completely. So we end the defense and the wall acts as if nothing ever happened. Now we have two turns to do um, as much damage as possible, basically. But our Emolite also has exhaust, so it can also not attack at the moment. So I'll just click on my Steel Splitter, then we do two attack. And we assign that one to the Isochronus to kill it, and then one more to this one. And now, next turn, they will be attacking. So if I click on my Steel Splitter and Immolite to do three damage, we will not kill this Isochronus. But instead, they will do six damage and kill both our walls. That's not good because now we will never be able to win because we only have five defense and uh, next time they will be doing basically six or four damage, probably four because we'll kill this one. So they will basically kill all our stuff. So what sh should I have done? I can rewind with these puzzles luckily. I should have held back this Immolite Emil and only do two damage. Because now they'll do six damage, but I can assign one to my Immolite, sacrificing it, three to this wall, but that means that I can now save this wall. So next time we have three defense against from this wall, which is great. So I'll attack with the Steel Spitter, do two damage. Now this Isochronus is dead. Now, next time I'll kind of attack with the Steel Spitter and do two damage. But now we have a problem. They do four attack, so they killed my wall, which has three, and my Tarsier, which had one. Now I'm stuck here with my Steel Splitter that does one damage, but I can't kill these Isochronus in time and they'll do four attack back to me and kill me. So what I should have done is hold back my Steel Splitter, only do one damage. They'll do four damage, which means I can kill my wall, but then assign one to my Steel Splitter, leaving the Tarsier alive. So now we actually have more offensive power, so I can attack this Isochronus. Then I'll attack them again. And now something interesting happens. They only have this Isochronus left, which does two damage. So it will kill my Tarsier. However, now it can never do anything to me anymore because it has two damage, but I have three defense. So whatever it tries, it can never kill me, but it is fragile. So I just gradually whittle it down. And as you can see, we won. And now here you can then see a tip. Always at the end of these puzzles, they give you a tip. And uh, one of them is here. A lone steel splitter can defeat two isochronuses, but only if they're off sync. Because then I would be blocking two damage each turn. 
And this is a tip that kind of sticks in your brain and then whenever you play the actual game you might run into a situation where this is important and then you might remember ooh maybe I should keep back a steel spitter because then I can use them in order to block that and stuff like that. So you can see how deep the thinking can go and how much well skill goes into these games because there is no random numbers at all. You can really plan for everything and the better you get at planning ahead, the more better you will do. So let's have a look at the content of the game. First of all, we have battles, of course. So we got quick play. You can choose where you want to uh, play against. We have casual match and you can basically go against more bots or more humans. And you can start with either uh, fewer units or more units that get chosen from this random list. We've got rank play, I haven't unlocked that. Um, you can play against the computer and then you can set everything. So this here, I just had in my example, this wacky bot. Um, I already have quite enough troubles against basic and added bots. So I haven't tried even expert, fearless, master and master bot with a seven uh, deep think. So yeah, um, it's really quite difficult, at least for me, maybe for you, this stuff is easy, but I'm having already plenty of, uh, of troubles here. All right. So then uh, you can uh, choose who goes first or if that's random, you can choose how much time you have to think. And then you can say, what do you want to do? Do you want to load from a replay so that you always get those same units that you had in the replay so that you can uh, train with that uh, type of units? Or you can go, for example, I want only the base set. I don't want any standard units. Or you can just click on standard and then you have eight random units. So there's a lot of custom customization here. Then you can play versus a friend, you can have a look at the leaderboards, or you can uh, learn here. You can go to the library, strategies and tactics, frontline, as well as crypt teaches Prismata. So there will also be an official player's guide soon, apparently. So this is all about the actual game, the PvP game in a way, even though you can play against bots. But the game has a lot of content besides this. So let's have a look at that. We can go to campaign here and there is a actual campaign with a story. And I've so far found the story really interesting. Now the key that I got from the developer has uh, unlocked uh, episode one of the campaign for me. So I don't have episode two, nor three, nor four, nor five. And um, if you go to Steam and you want to buy this game, then buy the Founders Edition. It's the same price as the normal edition, uh, but it unlocks everything uh, of these uh, episodes. And if you actually make a mistake about that, that you bought the normal edition, then you can click here for more info and uh, you can actually mail the developer and they will unlock it for you as far as I understand. But yeah, you can unlock single episodes for a certain amount of money or you can just buy that Founders Edition and then you have everything unlocked. Now I've played uh, the first episode here which contains all of these um, missions here. I still haven't uh, unlocked Incendiary Biorobotics. It requires expert medals because every mission you can also do as an expert challenge and i'm really enjoying this first of all the story is uh, very entertaining i thought uh, and i think it's quite well uh, drawn as well here now i'm just kind of clicking through it but basically it's all done with these text boxes and uh, you meet different people and it's kind of about how robots will get on the loose and start destroying stuff and you're this guy here who's been bored for a long time and you have to stop uh, that uh, onslaught of these robots. So that's quite, it's a nice story and every mission, it's uh, basically a little puzzle. Uh, basically a little bit like that puzzle I showed you before except that's properly really meant to be a puzzle uh, this uh, ties in with the story which enemies you encounter and stuff like that and I found it to be very entertaining so I haven't played episode 2 so I'm not sure how the story continues but this would be the reason for me to buy this game I am not at all big on PvP games like things like uh, Hearthstone and League of Legends or Dota or uh, or in this case this I don't really like uh, PvP games that much. However, I found the single player content to already be enough to warrant my interest because next to the campaign we also have this combat training and it sounds maybe a little bit boring and silly, but it's actually really a lot of fun. 
you have the beginner's lessons here. It really teaches you how to think in this game. And some of the missions can be quite hard. We've got the intermediate practice. And then here we've got the advanced exercises. So this was the one that I showed you. I haven't uh, continued yet on these. And then there are even some expert scenarios that I haven't done yet. So regarding single player content, if you don't really like PVP, but you do like kind of the idea of this game, then I can heartily recommend the game still because the single player content is already kind of worth it. Now let's click here on unit blueprints. You can see how many units there actually are because I only showed you that one list in this one battle. Uh, if I scroll through this, you can just see that there is many and I haven't even unlocked everything yet. As you can see, there are many things more to unlock for me. If you are into PvP though, then this game is really for you, I think, because first of all, there's no randomness, so you can really outsmart your enemies. Uh, you have rank battles, all that kind of stuff. You have a chat box where you can ask questions. You also have here a list of the top Masters players, but then you can also see if there's any live Twitch streams or featured live games. So you can actually, when we click on this, we can actually watch how the pros play it. And as you can see here, some of these units look very different from how we saw it before. And that's because of some of the monetization options of this game. So let's have a look at that. As you can see here, you can earn daily rewards by defeating master bot or winning in rank play, casual match or event modes. And then you can get these cores or uh, this stuff here, the shards. And you can use those here in customization. You can go to armory. I happen to have one core. I can put it in here. And then as you can see, we go to this thing here. Basically what happens here is I can click on one of these and I got two points, but I can get more points by kind of playing a bingo. So now I got a blue two. So if I get another two, I would get 80 more points. So there must be a two in there somewhere, but I can only open two more. I got a five and I got a three. So I managed to get two, three, five, ten, which gave me 20 extra points. So 20 plus all of this um, turns into 42. And I did not unlock these ones. So unfortunately, I don't have enough, for example, for a skin for the drone or a skin for the Radiant Centrifuge. But I do have enough points for uh, these emotes that you can equip and then use during a battle. And this one costs 25 and this one costs also 25 but I can't buy this one because I only have 17. Now, how do they monetize it? Well, you can buy, well, you can earn these shards, but you can also buy more of these shards in order to flip two more cards so that I have more score so that I can unlock these skins. And how does that work? Well, I can click on this get, and then you can see the monetization. If I buy the engineer tier, I will get access to all these episodes, but I will also get 2000 extra shards to spend. You can also buy some other tiers uh, that are one-time purchases, and then I will get extra shards to spend in order to get more skins. You can also buy shards individually. So if I click on this, you can see for $4.99, you can have 650 ch shards, and then there is some discounts on if you buy more. So 650 shards, that would give me basically three-ish times that I can flip two extra cards, which would then give me a high possibility to get this 325, so I can unlock the rare skins. Now there's definitely no shortage of these skins. If you go to customize, you can go to skins here, and then you can see per unit that every unit has a fair amount of, of different skins that you can get. These ones have all the different flags. You can have this animus that can be the root beer animus, the hand painted animus or the bevel gear animus. As you can see here, these are the ones I currently have. I've got the sports fan doom mech. I've got the vile drone, the spiral in vision infusion grid, the rectang mahar rectifier and the tiger shadow fang. So, there is a lot of customization that you can do if you're so inclined. You can also have these many emotes that we just saw. Um, there's badges that you can unlock by winning certain matches and stuff, and then you can equip them to show off to other people. You can unlock different avatars to use and so on. So there is a lot of stuff to unlock uh, for customization, just visual customization. How do you call it? Uh, aesthetics. But if you're so inclined, you can actually spend money in order to make this quicker. However, you cannot spend money to buy any power or any benefits whatsoever. There's nothing that gives you more experience. There's nothing that gives you more power, extra cards and so on. It's really only cosmetic. 
So what do I think of the game? I thought I would give you my opinion while these two pro players here are playing. I think this is one of the smartest games I've ever played. Like the mechanisms are very well done. The way blocking works and how you can assign damage, except if you didn't keep back a couple of blockers to actually block the damage, it's very well done. It's very smart and it really keeps you on your toes and thinking and I really enjoy that part. However, the game is not necessarily for me because I don't enjoy PvP games that much. I don't like to stand off against other opponents. Somehow that is just not for me. But the single player content is actually already worth it for me personally. I enjoyed the story so far and there's more episodes to come. And they all pose this particular kind of challenge that I very much enjoy trying to solve. If you finish the story, then there's all these expert challenges to do and they can really keep you scratching your head because some of them are very difficult, I thought. Very hard to figure out exactly how it works. So all in all, I think it is worth the money. Although for me, it's hard to say, of course, because I haven't spent any money on it yet. Although I do think it's maybe a little bit on the pricey side. Like it's, uh, I think, 24-ish dollars. And that's maybe a little bit on the pricey side. So I think I'll wait for a sale until I buy more um, of these episodes. However, if you are into PVP, I think for this amount of money, it's really a no brainer. There is no extra money you need to spend. For example, like in Hearthstone, where you can buy multiple booster packs in order to build up your deck. Here, everyone has access to the same deck and that gives no one an advantage over anyone else. And that's very refreshing to see. So overall, very good game and I hope you like this review and see you next time.